Blue Toy EK Vector RTX 2080 Ti RGB water block. Let's install it. That's, that's all we're doing today. The Thermaltake A500 Aluminum TG Mid-Tower features a sleek aluminum front panel and two 4mm tempered glass panels for breathtaking views. Enjoy 420 and 360 rad support at the front and top respectively, and breeze through installation with a dismantleable modular design. Step up your case game with the A500 Aluminum TG and click on the link below for more info. That's, that's all we're doing today. We're installing the water bottle. Well, we're also gonna check temperatures of it afterwards. This is a uh, Founders Edition block, of course. So it's gonna slap onto one of these guys. This will be a, a card, one of two cards. It's going into Hotline 2, all right? Very, very simple packaging here. It did come in a, a plastic sleeve that I removed earlier. It doesn't just come bare like this. You, you see it's got some RGB. It's got a fat RGB chunk right on the end. Chody mother effa. Mounting accessories, thermal pads. Oh wait, where'd the instructions go? There should also be a user's manual. This is not a manual. <sighs> no manual? Do I have to go online for it? Maybe they forgot mine. It's all good, got it right here on my phone. Step one, removing factory provided backplate. We just set this gap right here. Perfect, all right. All right, super tiny screws. Try not to lose any of ya. I actually don't feel too bad taking this cooler off because while it is much quieter than previous generation Founders Edition cards, it is still uh, not the coolest cooler around, especially when you compare it to some of the high-end add and board partner cards. So off it goes. The back plate is coming off, baby. Yeah. Whoa. Wait. That's not. Come on. Come on. Work with me. Ooh, a sticky thermal pads. Yeah. Oh, I need more tools. Give it that hex. Here it is. Step two. Unscrew more screws. Is that? Is that thermal pad? Show him like a villain. Looks like a booger. Oh, it's on my phone now. Gross. And finally, the last screw. <laughs> Oh! Ooh, these thermal pads look kind of nasty. That's fine, we gotta take them off anyway. Step three, cleaning the PCB, which I don't have anything to clean it with. Hold on. All right, so we can put the Founders Edition cooler away for now. I think this is the last we'll need to see it for today. I wonder where all the unused Founders Edition coolers of the world go. Forgotten stock coolers, where are they now? The full report at 11. All right, clean that chip. Na, 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 na. Let's take these gross pads off. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Step five. Cutting the thermal pads. Thermal padding, thermal padding. Why is it blue? Why is it blue? What is EK doing? Intel could be suing. Why is it blue? Baby, your body's so hot, you gotta use thermal pads once a month. Why is it so cold in your apartment? It's a thermal pad. Memory is done. Oh, I'm gonna straighten this out. This looks terrible. Part of me that's a little OCD with these things. Like, I'll cover the memory chips fully, but when they're not perfectly lined up with each other, it just drives me insane. I think I got issues, Doc. I belong in a thermal padded cell. Boom, that is more like it. What? I gotta get some skithers. I don't know if they give me enough pads for this crap. I might just have to use those pads, you know what I'm So we'll just have to use some of the pre-cut pads that were meant for the memory chips for our VRM. And I think we should have enough coverage at that point. Ooh, that looks good. Down the middle, keep it going. Yep. They thought he could be stopped, but they were so wrong. This is the last pad. Pads are done. Step number something. Installing the water block. Placing the block on the graphics card, yeah. Let's get some pasty on here. Okay, Frank and okay, thermal paste time. Here we go. You just wanna put a little P on your GPU. There it is. Yes, yes. That's always the most nerve wracking part, trying to get all 35 holes aligned on one try. And it looks like we did it. Well, I mean, I did it. You guys didn't do anything. These washers aren't big enough to go over the screw. So maybe the screw don't need you, washer. You'll get out. I'm starting to channel, channel Lyle a little bit. I've been hanging out with him too much. All right, I am prepared to screw for you on camera. Get in there, old guy. Oh, that is not, that is not even fitting. It's not the right screw. That's, that's why. No, bad. Bad screw, bad little screw. By the way, EK hasn't sent over a backplate yet, so that'll have to wait for later. I don't wanna wait for my car to get slower. I want to upgrade right now to an RTX 2080 Ti. Nvidia is a vampire. Set to drain. Your wallet. Nope. That needs to be longer. That is what she said to me. Ho, ho, ho. 
Ho 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 So yeah, it looks still kind of ugly from this end because uh, no backplate, but we're ready to plug her in and give it a whirl. All right, so we have the loop set up and pretty much all the water cooling hardware, as far as I can tell, is from EK. So we've got a pump res combo. There's a 60 millimeter thick rad and, uh, and just the GPU. Um, we're not cooling anything else, no CPU. Uh, we just wanted to isolate the video card. So we've got Unigen Heaven 4.0 running for about an hour strong now, and our max GPU temp is 52C. That's not bad, especially when you consider that the Founders Edition card with its stock cooler runs anywhere from 80 to 84C. We've cut it down by 30 degrees. That's insane. So the block is doing its job. It's also very quiet. Of course, your mileage may vary based on your loop configuration, what fans you're using and so forth. The RGB implementation looks fantastic. All the lighting by the fitting area is mwah, super sexy. And then even that big slab of RGB at the end of the card looks pretty great. Although you do see some LED hotspots on the underbelly of that section. So if you were mounting this block vertically in a case, uh, that may bother some people. It may not be a problem for other people, but on the other side, it looks perfectly seamless and you can't really tell where the LEDs are. Apart from that though, I'm a big fan of this block. You guys let me know what you think and the performance is just, mm, yes. Uh, it makes me even more excited to get Hotline 2.0 underway. So stay tuned for all that guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Till next time, have a good one and I'll see y'all in the next video.